Good morning. Half a day, the Committee on General Government Operation, Appropriation Housing is now called to order. Today is Monday, November 9th. The time now is 9.01. Welcome to everyone connected by Zoom and those tuning in via television or the YouTube channel. Thank you for your patience and for accommodating the Zoom platform while we maintain social distancing mandates. Notice for this joint for this public hearing, we're disseminated via email to all centers and all main media broadcasting outlets on Friday, October 30th um, and Thursday, November 5th. The bill that we'll be addressing this morning is bill number 380-35 LS introduced by, authored by Senator Jose Pito Terlai, co-sponsored by Speaker Tina Rose Munya Barnes, Senator Clint Rigel, myself, and Senator Mary Camacho Torres an act to appropriate funds to the Governor of Guam Retirement Fund to conduct a study relative to enhanced benefits for peace officers in the defined benefit 1.75 retirement system. I will now uh, like to recognize, well, first of all, the rules of conduct. This Zoom meeting is hosted by my staff and, and will mute all Zoom participants until called upon by myself. Members of the committee and or non-committee members wishing to speak may indicate their desire to me through the in-app chat feature. Individuals testifying shall be first recognized by me before speaking and begin by stating their name for record keeping purposes when called to speak. Please ensure that you are unmuted. Committee members will be allowed to pose a question to an individual testifying. Questions and testimonies shall be confined to the substance or nature of the agenda. Personal inference as to the character or the motive of any senator or any individual testifying is not permitted. Any violation of this general rule of conduct will result in removal from the public hearing by my host. Please ensure that your video remains on throughout the hearing. Participants must be visible at all times and not engage in any other activity during the hearing. If you're getting a drink, drinking coffee or having a soda or whatever, I have no problem taking a snack. Just don't make it look too obvious that you're having a full meal. And fade, failure to maintain visibility may cause your removal from the meeting live stream. I'd like to acknowledge the my colleagues that have joined me. We have, I mentioned Senator Jose Pito Terlai, He's there. We have sent uh, Leslie Sector, Senator uh, Amanda Shelton. We have, um, I'm just going across the screen. I, I see Senator Mary Camacho Torres. I see Senator Therese Terlai, Senator Jim Moylan, um, Leader Senator Tello Tidy. With that, I'd like to ask um, Senator Pito Terlai to write an opening statement to his bill. Senator Pito. Thank you very much, Joe. And I just, before I, I share my thoughts, uh, le let me just first off, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for, uh, let me just say that every state in the country has a separate retirement consideration for public safety employees in recognition of the fiscally demanding nature of public safety work. Um, Mr. Chair, you want me to, are you going to read the, uh, the, the bill itself by section? You want me to do that or you want to do it? No, no, you won't, you won't need to. Um, that's already been posted. We'll just go ahead and continue on with the bill. Just your okay. opening statement about the bill. Generally, what, okay. what it's all about, so everybody understands generally what your intent was. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, colleague. All right. Thank you. And uh, I'd like to also recognize that uh, colleagues that have joined us, Senator Kelly marsh And I'm, I'm just looking. Um, Joe, do we have anybody testifying on the bill? Because I know I did get a call from the retirement fund. Uh, they're, they're, they will be submitting testimony. And uh, there are questions that they wanted to make sure that are answered before we move on on these bills. Kind of like specifics. And I, I'm going to ask those questions, but I don't know if anybody else will be able to answer it. But I'm going to ask um, my colleagues to go ahead and uh, if you want to ask questions about the bill or you want me to throw out some of the questions that the retirement fund has asked me. Okay, so I, I, I see Senator Therese shaking her hand, head probably like, yeah, please tell us what the retirement is looking at, right? Okay. Okay, one of the things that the fund uh, seeks the following us, clarification as to whether funds should be studying the enhancement of current plans. And if the intent is the latter, okay. Defined benefit, the defined contribution plan or the defined benefit 1.75. And if I'm correct, the bill is referring to the 1.75. So, and then they ask is that if the intent is the latter, what type of specific retirement plan 
plan uh, is the legislature go on contemplating providing for the peace officers. I think that's something that we can discuss here. I was, I know we received testimony and and maybe uh, Senator Pito, you can read the testimonies before I go on with the questions so that we can, so that everybody can get the, all our colleagues can get the gist of all the support they have out there. Senator Pito, you have a listing of all the testimonies, correct? And maybe you can read it out so that everybody knows where generally where everybody stands. I go to go to and unmute. Uh, un unmute, Vito. Mr. Chu, I don't have those testimonies on hand. Okay. Do you do you have them? Do you have them with you? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. Well, well then why don't I go ahead and I'll, I'll, I'll read some of them. I received them. I'm, I'm going to ask my colleagues, have you all received a copy of the testimonies? Please shake your hand. No. Okay, let me get my staff um, send all the uh, standby. Do we? Okay, well, I'm, I'm gonna read a few of them so that everybody can get suggested. I just, I just received several testimonies here. Uh, if you want me to read it down. If you can, please. If you can, please, okay. Senator Pito. Okay. Most of these testimonies are coming out from the, uh, the, the five personnel. Let me just say, uh, dear Senator, we, the undersigned firefighters of PD Fire Station, submit this letter to express our support of Bill number 380-35 to request the Guam uh, Retirement Fund to conduct an actuary study on a, re on a retirement plan for uniform public safety officers within the government of Guam that is fair and in line with our counterparts in the United States and on with our military uh, basic rights here on our island. This plan should include the mandatory retirement age to protect the employees as well as the government. It will also result in a financial savings to the government by not having to pay a government employee a high hourly rate due to, to the nature to the tenure. It is something that we that is directly needed and we fully support it. Uh, I, I I got several uh, signatures here on this particular uh, uh, testimony. We have A.R. Kinata, L.G. Polino, J.T. Rivera, M.R. Santos, B.K. Arceo from uh, the B platoon and A platoon. We have J.J. Cruz, P.C. Carbolito, P.B. Farris, J.S. Bass Bass. Now, I'm going to go read another, uh, another uh, uh, testimony here. To whom it may concern, this is to inform you that I am in support of Bill 380-35. I have worked as a firefighter employed, employed by the government of Guam for the last 25 years. I must say most were enjoyable years, but the wear and tear on the, on the body has taken it, its toll because of the stress on the job, both mentally and physically. A few people are in line to work shall be in a separate category. I have been injured multiple times with no complaints. Showing up to work injured because of the shortage of manpower and still getting the job done. Three years ago, I was diagnosed with colon cancer and as of today, I am still in remission. I choose this profession and I would like to do it over and over again. That being said, we have contributed one third more to the retirement than, than an 80 hour employee. That alone should count for something. I was thinking if my mother or daughter was a firefighter, would I want to work until age 62? Knowing what I know and what I have been through, I think not. So I'm asking myself and future firefighters to make the right, to make this right. Thank you for your support. That's one, that's one, that is one of the written testimony that I received. I do have another one here. I have several. Honorable Senators, half a day. Thank you both for your service in this wonderful island and, and her people. I am John Anthony Blas Muna and I am a firefighter to EMT 
with the Guam Fire Department for 15 years of service. I am 40. Again, thank you more specifically for taking on the task to try and help us in public safety get a more ideal retirement age. Hopefully, the two of you have received countless support from my brothers and sisters in public safety. In my humble opinion, it is not ideal to have 60 years old out there doing the job that we do. We could go in circles and circles arguing or debating that 60 years old olds can do this and are capable of this and, and such. My most humble reply would be to be to invite you and your colleagues out for a shift or two as an honored guest and ride along. My only proposal proposal is to consider offering retirement to public safety personnel at an early age. If a committee is found to decide and collaborate regarding any help, I would gladly volunteer to be a part of it. God bless you both. God bless our island and our people. From Anthony, John Anthony B. Munia. Another uh, testimony here, written testimony, uh, Mr. Speaker. My name is Andrew Lee, and I am a firefighter with the Guam Fire Department Search and Rescue Bureau. I would like to thank you for creating this platform for our firefighters and public safety personnel in Guam to address this concern. I have been with the fire department for seven years, and I have seen the rigors and sacrifice this duty requires. It is unfair, extremely unjust to require firefighters and public safety personnel in the field to work and to wait until the age of 60 to retire and to receive their pension, retirement pension. I am in support of this bill and the study in discussion. Thank you for your time and consideration on this matter. And Andrew Lee. This written testimony was coming from Andrew Lee. Let me read another written testimony here. Buenas Jan half a day. I am in support of the 30 year retirement reduced to 25 years. In comparison of other uniformed personnel across the nation, to include the military, Guam's uniformed personnel remains at 30 years for retirement. Overall, the government of Guam should reduce the retirement to 25 years to maintain efficiency and continuity to each department. An employee that remains at work doing the same thing at the same pace will become complacent. Our community is growing and so is the government, but efficiency is clogged. Our community is growing, are developing a reasonable cycle of holding on to experienced employees and hiring new employees is a must. An employee working in any profession for 20 years has reached their peak in experience and remaining years of passing on that knowledge. And having newly hired employees provides the government service with highly motivated employees in retrospect to the military and many other government across the nation. Okay, I, uh, I have another uh, written testimony here. Addressed to uh, Senator Say Peter Terlai, Senator Tina Muna Barnes, Clint Rigel, Joe San Agustin, Mary Torres, from Edward C. Artero II, Battalion Chief, One Fire Department, Subject Bill Number 380-35 ELS, Quality Retirement Plan. Half a day, Senators. Thank you for opening the door and researching the idea and providing an adjustment to our current retirement plan or the possibility to create a new retirement plan for the Guam Fire Department and all other public safety officers of the government of Guam. As it currently stands, some of us were grateful to be given the opportunity to convert to the OB 1.75 plan and the guarantee a new team benefit. However, the retirement age without penalty was set at age 62. I am kindly requesting if you can add some language in your research to compel the retirement fund to do a study on the Department of Defense, US Navy fire fighters retirement plan who have a mandatory retirement set at age 57. I alone with many others feel that the Department of Defense, US Navy firefighters mandatory retirement age of 
57 is more in line with extending appreciation and gratitude to those who provide service to the community and the risk and risk their lives over the course of their careers. Another testimony that I received from Edward C. Artero the second. There is one aspect that seems to be overlooked at that, and that is the age criteria, criteria at initial employment. The convict in, in creating a retirement plan with a mandatory retirement age is you also need age is you also need to set an age requirement on the front and hiring process. In order for an employee to avail for a guarantee annuity option, they also need to do their part in contribution. I would suggest or recommend new language via Guam code annotated to make a change in the hiring process. Using age 57 as a mandatory retirement age example, as an example, an employee will need to be hired before their 33rd birthday so they can adequately contribute a minimum of 25 years of service to make the fund healthy and sustainable. An increasing annuity scale can be developed for those employees who are hired between the age of 18 and 31. Should you, should you and your staff require this information or clarification, I can be reached at, I have the email here uh, and I'll give it to you, my, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. Another testimony that was that I received, this written testimony is in reference to Bill 380-35 LS Quality Retirement Plan. I am currently detailed as the acting officer in charge of the Guam Fire Department HASMAT CSR team, CSR team, Haggard Fire Station number five, B platoon, and fully support your inquiry into a quality retirement plan. As mentioned in your Press release, our state side and local federal counterparts have been implementing much more reasonable retirement plan for their service members in regards to age 57 years of service, 20 to 35 and benefit. It didn't mention the, the percent of uh, the salary. Taking into, into consideration the rigorous and fiscal condition of the work that is done exposure to heat, danger, dangerous and toxic environment and the mental stress or stresses is what fire, firefighters EMT deal with and see every day, death, insomnia, PTSD and so forth. Firefighters nationally have seen dramatic rise, rises in numbers of members suffering from cancer related sim symptoms stress and physical disabilities, which become prevalent at retirement or soon after. Studies are conducted continually and protocols are implemented according to try and avoid these instances for firefighters. But currently, prolonged services is definitely affecting the quality of life at retirement. Changing our eligibility for retirement at the age of 57 can only help our department in the long run by trading Trending our medium age firefighters towards the national average and avoiding the plethora, plethora of symptoms. A lot of personal experience due to prolonged expo exposure to the condition of the job. All too often we hear stories of our retired personnel making it to the finish line of working only to have something unexpected occur, medical and things like that, financial hardship and things like that. That details derails the plan of retiring and enjoying the reward of their labor. Retirement for a career of service and protection should be something to look for with pride and not something we should be degrading, rating. I submit this for your information from DP Miles, Agat. Okay, uh, Senator Pito, we have also Mr. Miles is here. Um, uh, Philip Jenis and uh, GFD flight DP Miles. Maybe you might want to have them testify maybe. And we have the Amatic Fire Station. The testimony we got, we're all from the fire department, right? 
Yeah, yeah. Okay, so if you if you if you like, Senator Peter, we'll have um the GFD uh Mr. Miles come online. Um let's let's get Joe Mexican. Can we get uh, uh, Mr. Time. Miles on live and get Mr. and the Umatic link. fire station link turned on so we can uh we can see the folks out there. Because I remember way back, uh, Peter and I were both, uh, when we were in the police department, we could switch to the fire, but there's no more switching, no more. Everybody, whatever you join, that's where you stay. There you go. Got Mr. Miles there. All right, Mr. Miles, if you can go ahead and uh, unmute, sir, and just uh, identify yourself. And I guess maybe you, <laughs> you, you, you've heard um, your testimony being presented, but you may want to present additional testimony, sir. Good morning, Senators. I'm Fire Lieutenant uh, David Miles from the Agate Fire Station uh, Hazmat Team, B Platoon, as stated by Senator uh, Terlahi. Uh, pretty much uh, what Senator wrote there, my written testimony is everything uh, I wanted to say. Fortunately, uh, I am on duty this morning, so it can be called away at any minute. That's why uh, I wasn't able to uh, provide the oral testimony that you wanted. But uh, I think Senator Terlahi covered it. Uh, pretty thoroughly with what I wrote and uh, from my uh, colleagues that wrote uh, previous testimonies. It's pretty much uh, what uh, what's on my mind and what, what I wanted to say. If you could just stand by there, uh, Lieutenant uh, Miles, and we'll get your Matic Fire Station on and then I'll open it up for my colleagues if they wanted to ask um, you fire folks uh, questions, okay? Yeah, yes, sir. Joe, let's get the Matic Fire Station on. Uh, we have, um, and then we also have a Stumbo out there, right? There you got your Matic. Let, let. See, there was somebody there and they walked away. So let's get somebody from your Matic Fire Station to turn on. We also have a Stumbo fire. Um, Joe, turn on a Stumbo also. Let, let, let's see all the folks that are out there that wanted to testify. All right, I don't see you, Matic, ready. Is the Stumbo ready to testify? Please identify who you are, gentlemen, and let's hear let's hear your testimony, please. Uh, sorry, sir, I'm not here to testify. I'm just here to show support and gain knowledge. My name is Joshua Perez. Uh, I'm a firefighter one for the past seven years. So I do advocate that we do move towards a, a new retirement, at least for my brethren in uh, law enforcement as well as the uh, fire department. Again, uh, you've heard it before. You know, we can, we can work anywhere from 120 hours, lack of sleep. So it does take a toll on our bodies, but we are willing to serve. And that's why we continue to do what we do. But we are uh, hoping for that much more help in regards to enjoying our day-to-day -day lives just as much as anyone else. So that's what right. I have to say for today. Thank you, sir. You have a gentleman behind you also, sir. Would you like to say something before I ask my colleagues to ask questions of anything? Mr. Perez, you have somebody behind uh, you there, maybe? It's the same with uh, Firefighter Joshua Perez. My name is Firefighter Jared Pendon, here to show support. And of course, uh, from all sorts of uh, retirement reform. I'm only right. uh, two years in, so I've got a long way to go. All right. Okay, just don't despair, folks, okay? We got the folks from Umatic. Sir, if you can identify who you are, and if you can speak, uh, tell us about any testimonies you may have. Uh, buenas and half a day, Senator. Buenas. Manana, Jesus. Uh, my name is uh, Fire Service Specialist A.T. Sir Nicholas. Okay, uh, I've been in the I've been in the department for going on 30 years now. However, I I, should, I completely support uh, what Senator Fido is uh, uh, doing. Uh, I'm gonna just give you a little bit of history, really, with. Uh, firefighters that have length of service in this department, what they go through on a daily basis. So if we want to go and follow statistics, I don't have it in front of me, but basically firefighters rank one of the highest in as far as uh, illness related with stress and heart attack. Now, I I'm going to give you a history of myself. Okay, I've been in the department for so long that in the past number of years, I had I just came back from Florida, just to give you an idea. I was off island for two years. I went to a cardiac institute and I went to three heart procedures. 
Now, I cannot say really if it's um, where or how, it's the stress, where, where it came from. But I can tell you that it had a part to do with my job. Okay. Uh, a stress factor in, in any law enforcement ranks one of the highest of any death related illnesses. And being part of law enforcement as a firefighter with the police or DOC or marshals or what have you, we have to eliminate those factors. And one way of elim eliminating it really is providing an early retirement for law enforcement individuals. Uh, we got to take care, first of all, of first and foremost of law enforcement individuals, not, not uh, undermining the other government of law employees from different agencies. Uh, but because of the stress that's put on all law enforcement, uh, we have to do something as far as retirement because of the work we do. How would you like it if a fireman that's over uh, 60 years old respond to your house and schooling a two and a half inch hole? You see, we're not as physically as fit when we were uh, as young as 20 years old. See, I'm getting old. I'm over my 50s, just to let you know. Okay, 55, if you're a worst senior citizen. Okay, so, so we're not 20 years old anymore. And now we yeah, are with the physical fitness in place now. Uh, I, I, I find it that it will be more challenging for uh, people my age to actually uh, overcome and pass those uh, uh, physical fitness requirements. Okay, we've seen people with medical ailments in this department, also besides uh, having heart conditions, diabetes, hypertension, you know, and all other illnesses. Okay, but it has a factor when we start performing our duty. Okay, regardless of what, we still have to respond out there to the community and do our due diligence to serve the community to our utmost and professionalism way. Okay, that's, that's what we're paid for to do. Okay, we lose. While people are resting at home, we're here at work responding at the wee hours of the night or early morning. And I'll tell you what, Senator, if we don't respond, then I'm happy for the people of Guam. Why? Because they're home safe. When GPD don't respond, it's because the people of Guam are safe. Okay, when no prisoners uh, escape from DOC, it's because they're, they're doing the job. People at home are safe, you know, and that's what we do. And, and we, we cannot keep on confounding stress and, and illnesses, and, and then we have to wait 60, uh, to age 62 to retire, or firefighters have to wait to age 62. I mean, we have counterparts in the mainland. I, I just gave an example of Washington State, that if you're gonna retire at 20, 20 years, 25 years, uh, 20 years, you can retire. But the percentage is lower. They're going to give you a 40% retirement pension. If you retire at 25, your percentage goes up. So you have to make a choice, retire early or retire later to gain more percentage. And I think that's what should have been done here in Guam. I think that's what that should have been done to begin with. I mean, Senator, we paid what government of Guam spend money having people come in from Oak Island and do studies. And we paid half a million dollars here, three hundred thousand dollars there. But I think our people of Guam are smart enough to make decisions. And I'm pretty sure all senators there, present, listening to me, are smart enough to make decisions. You know, can can we protect our law enforcement? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Provide the early retirement system for law enforcement and give the, the younger generation a chance to come into the department. Because as we go along, we're not gonna, you know, we're not younger. We're not gonna get any younger. We, we want people that if you're in GPD and you're trying to approach a subject, an individual for, or trying to chase down a, a robber. I mean, you wanna be, I'm uh, has been at 55. I'm not gonna chase that guy down. The guy's gonna definitely, uh, beat me running, you know. Uh, but if I was 22, 25, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, I'll tell you what, 
I'm gonna give that guy a chance. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna catch up to that guy. So we have to really think uh, logically that something's got to be done in the far as the retirement system is concerned. Okay, we we cannot let this go on forever. We are definitely not. Action's got to be taken to to protect our law enforcement personnel uh, because of uh, uh, health wise. Uh, age-wise is a factor in any law enforcement uh, uh, job. So again, Senator, and to all to other senators listening, listening, thank you, and to this Marcy, I, I really hope that you support this. And my uh, other thing i like to say, Senator, on his, uh, I, I'm in support of Fido's, uh to create a study. Uh, my honest opinion, we can go beyond that study. Get a bill in place, have it heard in the, in the, the floor. And get it passed. So that's my uh, my thing. My that's one of my own personal opinion. Put a bill in place. Get in the floor. Get a hearing done. Get it passed. And 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 uh, uh, work with the the uh, retirement uh, fund uh, board members in regards to that matter. But get a bill in place and, and get it done uh, as soon as possible for all the firefighters now. Again, and, and law enforcement, police officers, DOC, likewise. Again, Dr. Nasus Masi, and uh, I thank you for your time. Thank you very much, sir. Um, yes, and I, I'm in agreement with that statement that uh, when they do the study, then maybe a bill should be in some way and in some fashion att uh, attached to this bill, if anything. But um, thank you. I'm just looking around. If there's anyone else from the fire department, I was hoping to find some police officers here and. DOC folks, but but it'll apply to everybody across the board when it identifies peace officers. So, um, Senator Pito, did you want to ask any questions of the uh, the three fire stations? Uh, Mr. Chair, I just wanted to clarify uh, something here because you know there's people that are calling me regarding why did you mention or how come you didn't mention DOC and the other agencies that do enforcement, and I want to say that. Uh, you know, as defined by Chapter 51, Title 17, 17, Guam Code annotated, everybody, everybody that 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 is required to to be certified under the post uh, is covered on this one. So I just want to make that clear. Thank you, oh, Mr. Chair. Oh yes, uh, thank you, Senator Peter, because it's it's quite clear for me. I mean, I'm just surprised. Police officers, DOC, criminal investigators, everyone listening, the peace officer will get caught on this. Um, and I'm just surprised they're not on it. The fire department's on it. I mean, they're they're on the ball. <laughs> so I think everyone else should should get on the ball and get on with it. So so we can all join hands. Um, uh, let me just go around real quick. Senator Amanda, do you have any questions you want to pose on the fire department? Uh, and then I can go over some of the other issues that the retirement fund had tweaked to me of some of the issues. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I do want to express my appreciation to everyone from the fire department here this morning to show your support for the bill. And I do understand the, you know, the rigorous amount of work that you're all under and the, the stress that would um, would uh, be be necessary for you to have these uh, benefits for your retirement. And so I I appreciate all of that and I am in support of the bill as well. And Mr. Chair, I um, just a few minutes ago received a, a testimony to my office from a DOC officer, if I can just read it into the record. Uh, Buenas yeah. and half day. My name is Christopher J. Donato, 50 years of age. I've been with the Department of Corrections since May 20th, 1991. I have congestive heart failure along with a history of rapid irregular heartbeat. I currently have an implanted cardioverter defibrillator ICD. My current condition is a result of high stress and long hours worked on odd shifts as diagnosed by my cardiologist at Good Samaritan Hospital in Los Angeles, California. Throughout my 29 plus years, I have seen officers succumb to illness caused by stress and long hours. Officers have retired and have passed on in less than a year of retirement. Law enforcement is a paramilitary employment. Military personnel are able to retire within 20 years of service. I speak on behalf of all the officers of the Department of Corrections 
with underlying illnesses, as well as those who may experience illnesses throughout their career as law enforcement officers. I am humbly begging you to consider adjusting our retirement from 30 years to 25 years by allowing officers with 25 years of service will lower salary costs for the government of Guam by ridding the high paid officers and hiring new officers with much lower pay. For example, salaries of those with 25 years of service equates to two newly hired officers. Studies have shown that law enforcement personnel's lifespan are reduced by 10 years. I have seen officers pass away in their late 30s and early 40s because of heart ailments, cancer, diabetes, hypertension, strokes, and other illnesses. I humbly ask for all your support in adjusting the retirement eligibility for law enforcement and give us a chance to experience and enjoy retirement life most especially for those with underlying ailments. I have dedicated 29 plus years to the Department of Corrections and I need to retire due to my medical condition. I have sought medical retirement. However, to be able to be medically retired, you must be dead or dying. Officers who have suffered strokes and are not able to walk unassisted were denied medical retirement. I was told that as long as I can walk, I can work. Again, I humbly beg of you all to give us a chance to retire. I am eligible to retire now, but because of my age, I will be penalized and make less than minimum wage. Therefore, I have no choice but to wait it out so I can support my family. And And this again is from Christopher J. Donato from the Department of Corrections. And I will send it uh, through the email. I'm unable to put it in the chat, but I'll put it, I'll respond to the email with all the testimonies to all senators. Oh, please, thank you. Thank you, Senator Mana. Do you have anything else you wanted to bring up um, before I move on to the next senator? That's it, Mr. Chair. I'll listen to your remarks regarding uh, retirement concerns. All right, um, Senator, um, look at my list here. I'm just going down the list. Senator Therese, do you have any questions or any statements you wanna make? Um, just, yeah, I'm, I'm also looking forward to, uh, thank you all for your testimony, first of all, I appreciate it very much, and I understand, and most of you are talking about early retirement, which is, uh, I, I understand that there are other, like, for example, the federal models that have been pointed out, and, uh, and the merits behind early retirement for peace officers. The retirement fund seems to be pointing out, you know, uh, are we talking about defined benefit retirement or defined contribution retirement? Which plan are we really going to allow that early retirement on? And they talk about, uh, as some of the officers have pointed out, that if if they started at a certain age, then they would have contributed enough. And and uh, so how do we take care of the in between <clears throat> or other options? But but pretty much the cost. And then. Um, uh, um, and so you clarified that this would apply to all peace officers, but there's also a part of the bill that talks about uh, not just the early retirement study on the early retirement, but study on allowing all employees of the government of Guam to, you know, uh, enter into the 1.75 plan. So that's a, that's a that's much bigger than yeah, just peace officers. It's it's allowing everybody to switch into that 1.75 after the deadline and. And I guess retirement's asking who bears that, um, or I don't know what, yeah, what the mechanics of that, where the funding would come from for that. So yeah, uh, of course, um, if we can just get all those questions answered, we can we can move forward with this. So I wanna thank all of you and thanks for your hard work and uh, especially during this pandemic for your, um, the extra work that you've had to incur. So Suzu Smasi, thank you. All right, thank you, Senator Therese. I'd like to also recognize a colleague that have joined us, Senator Luis Munoz. I just noticed you, I apologize, ma'am. Um, also, Senator Jim Mullen, do you have anything you wanted to, to say um, in support of this bill or against the bill or comments to the bill? <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank the uh, testimonies. I'm looking forward to hearing more about the bill. I have no other questions at this time. Thank you, Mr. All Chairman. Right. Um, Senator uh, Kelly Marsh, ma'am, Titano. Senator, Senator Marsh. 
And Anasi Duz, and uh, good morning to everybody. And, you know, I want to join with the others and just thank everybody for the sacrifices that are made on a daily basis for the entire community. Um, and and I, I really do understand the testimony that was provided um, that it's, you know, it's a very demanding job and it does take a toll um, and that impact is important to consider. And so some of what I was thinking about as I was going through the bill and listening to the testimony is um, just wanting to make sure I think the fiscal note is still um, figuring this out and waiting for more data, but we want to make sure that there's enough to be able to uh, fund the study so that the position is clear, it covers um, the issues that, that need to happen to make sure that we do this the right way and, and to take into all the considerations. So um, I hope that additional data will come so that we understand um, how much the cost will be so that we're appropriating correctly. And, you know, some of what was going through my mind is the difference between equality and equity. And when we look at the different polls and the different demands and the different sacrifices, um, this, this can be important to consider. And um, it definitely has some reality. So, I guess the other part that I was thinking of is just um, wanting to figure out how to broaden this, not necessarily in this bill, but to make sure that we are, we are perhaps starting here and then agreeing all together that we will look at uh, other professions such as the medical community um, social workers and, and others where maybe it's not as much a physical toll, but a, you know, a, a psychological toll. And, and for me personally, I'm not equipped to, to weigh out what that means, but um, I'd like to see that as a body, we understand and agree that we, we need to broaden this um, and and uh, maybe use this as a stepping off point. And so some of the testimony that stood out to me and I really appreciate uh, some of what was shared is, you know, the, the realities of the difference between uh, somebody uh, such as a young individual that one is trying to catch or contain in some way and the, the difference it might make to somebody who's now uh, getting to be 60 or something like that. So I, I thought that that was a very important point. And I think also the point about the, the higher salaries being retired um, and the lower salaries uh, allowing maybe for two new recruits, that, that can balance out. I mean, the costs are going to shift around. They're going to shift around to the retirement. They're going to shift to additional recruitment. So again, as a body, we need to be mindful and make sure that we, you know, as we go forward with this, that we do this right. If we're going to have more recruitment, we need to make sure that we have that in place and that we're appropriating the fund to make sure that that happens. Um, and so, yeah, it's just calling upon us more than anything else to be, to be mindful that we support this not just in one part and then the other parts are not supported, but that we're supporting this holistically. And so, like I said, I just call upon us to do that. Um, so I guess at the end, I, I don't have a question, but I do appreciate those that came in to testify. I know it takes time. Um, and right now with the virtual, it takes many layers and processes to get in. So I do appreciate those who, who took the time and shared many points for us to consider. I think they're very valuable points for us to consider. So um, yeah, I don't have a question, but if I could possibly ask one at the end in case one crops up, Suzu Mr. Chair. Okay, um, 
Senator Luis, do you have anything, Senator Luis, you wanted to bring up before I move on to Senator Torres and Senator Tello? Thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. And again, I apologize for my delay because I have some computer issues, but uh, I'm glad I was able to hop on. And, and it, if anything, at least uh, thank the, the sponsor of this bill for the opportunity to study. And that's really what this bill is. It's the opportunity to, to study their conversion uh, of the retirement plan. And I do agree that, you know, peace officers do have a little extra work and many sacrifices that they make, you know, staying away from their family and putting their own health in the back burner um, so they can take care of other people's health. So I do want to thank them for that. And, and I know that firsthand that that happens, you know, they put their health last. Um, and so this, and, and I can understand why they, they have health issues, but hoping to that, you know, if we do uh, come to a conclusion that we can have them convert to a different retirement plan and retire early, that they will put themselves first, because I think that's really a mindset that kind of develops in them throughout their, their career as a peace officer. And it's really hard for them to kind of re, re, resort back to taking care of themselves. So um, I, I am in support of the bill. There are some things that I, like I said, uh, our previous colleagues have mentioned about, you know, uh, reaching out to the retirement uh uh, and, and getting a little bit more uh, insight on what their feelings are. But uh, I just want to thank um, all of our peace officers that are here today that took time out to come in, uh, come and support this bill. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right. Thank you, Senator Luis. Um, Senator Mary, and I'll save uh, the minority leader for last, Senator Tello, so relax, Senator Mary. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, thank you, Senator St. Augustine. I do have um, some, some uh, thoughts, though, about whether this is consistent with the retirement chapter uh, in terms of the definition. And I listened to uh, Senator Pito Terlahi's explanation about uh, why he thought peace officers were the term peace officers uh, as defined by Chapter 51 of Title 17 was sufficient to carry cover everyone. Um, I listened to that, but I, I wonder if it, in order to be, to be um, broad and consistent with the retirement fund uh, chapter, if, if we should instead look at the definition of who is eligible as the uniform personnel that is uh, defined in another chapter, um, I'm referring to chapter four I mean, Title IV, Chapter 8, Article 1, which is uh, Section 8104, and that talks about uniform personnel and who is covered under uniform personnel. And maybe, maybe you know, in, in looking at that definition of uniform personnel, it would be more consistent with the retirement fund and not have any, uh, pose any conflicts or shortcomings that make, may make this uh, measure um, a little controversial because, you know, the, the sentiment right now is, is everyone covered? Would this cover everyone? And there is an argument that yes, peace officers covers everyone, but in the definition of peace officers, that, that definition, it's more those that are post compliant or under the post requirement, as opposed to the more broader definition under uniform personnel that's contained in Title IV. So I don't know if you're following me. We're talking about a Title 17 definition of who's covered. And we're talking, but I'm proposing that maybe it shouldn't be a Title 17 definition. It should instead be a Title IV definition because then that covers everyone that's a uniform personnel and it's more consistent with the retirement fund definition. So there won't be any, um, you know, any conflicts or discrepancies. So that would be my only, my only thought, um, uh, you know, in terms of what is fair, what is broad and what would not pose any problems in terms of who we consider, you know, studying for, uh, for added um, benefits or, or for benefits. So uh, I'll, I'll maybe uh, circle back with you, 
uh, Mr. Chair or, or uh, Peter, Senator Peter Tulaki, you know, so that our staff is clear about the concern that I have and whether we should maybe look at that because it's a very simple fix to the bill. You know, it's the bill's very short and uh, it may be a simple fix or a simple consideration just so we don't run into some challenges with the retirement fund. Understood. Senator, I'll look, I'll, I'll, I'll look into that and I'll let you know. I'll look, I'll okay. look into that and before we get uh, to the public hearing, I'll clarify that. Thank okay, you very excuse much. Me, okay. Okay, Senator Tello, Tariwi, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and not a problem. I'm a patient person. <laughs> I don't mind being last. Uh, you know, I really appreciate all the firemen that came um, uh, to t testify today. I, I was really hoping that retirement, like we all could be here because I'm pretty sure you, even the firemen might have some questions too uh, with regards to this. Now, as we know, this bill requires 75,000, uh, an appropriation of 75,000. And in these dire times, you know, that's still a lot of money considering, you know, when we're seeing revenues not coming into the government of Guam as projected. So uh, the first question is, where is the 75,000 gonna come from? Is it gonna come from the fire department or is it gonna be shared amongst all the peace officers, uh, departments and agencies, fire, police, DOC, to, um, uh, you know, take money out of their uh, budget to cover this 75. So that's a big question we need to ask ourselves first, where that 75,000 is coming from. The second one is in, in section two of the bill, it states that the study will be funded by, of course, the 75,000 appropriation, uh, which would include the analysis and costs associated with providing the option for peace officers and other government of Guam classified employees who did not have the option of the membership in the defined benefit 175 retirement system or who are in the defined contribution retirement plan, uh, retirement system uh, to enter the DB 1.75 retirement system. So my question is why uh, should unclassified employees not be included in the study? Do we have un unclassified employees? We sure do. Do they contribute to the retirement fund? They sure do. So why are we not including unclassifieds and it's only classified? That was one of the questions I've had, you know. And then we also realized that the DB the DB 175 retirement system, it requires that the age at 62, um, the, the plan has a minimum retirement age of 62. Um, any uh, lower will result in an unfunded liability. So these these concerns are 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 great, you know, considering the situation that we are within the government of Guam. But I would like to see that we do follow what the federal government has done and within their studies to show that individual peace officers who are on the ground, who are working hard, um, it shows in these studies that they should retire at an earlier age than most individuals. And um, I, I believe that to be true as well. But we got to be realistic about this and, and be able to, to implement it and put it in place. There are a lot of issues in the bill, but I'm pretty sure that if we do do this study and we do find the $75,000 to do this study, you know, it, 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 will, it will answer a lot of questions. But yeah, I think the federal government is on the right track with regards and, and recognizes the hard work and the uh, wear and tear on a person's body on the kind of work that they do. Um, along with the stress factor. So I greatly appreciate everyone's testimony and I look forward to uh, hearing from uh, the retirement. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, Senator Tidewe. And um, moving along to what I was saying earlier, um, they also asked confirmation that all enhanced benefits are to be borne strictly by the peace officers and employees. That's what the retirement uh, fund is asking. Um, keeping in mind that the 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 Board of Trustees cannot at this time take a position on the bill until some of the questions are answered. Um, clarification of the purpose and intent of the provisions outlined in section two that you brought up, Senator Tidewe, paragraph two, which provides such appropriations shall be proportionate amount for each entity based on the number of uniform personnel eligible for the enhanced benefit per entity. And that's what Senator Torres brought up was the uniform personnel. Um, 
clarification also they're asking on whether the total appropriates of 75,000 includes the cost of permitting additional governor Guam defined contribution members to elect to transfer to define benefit 1.75. If yes, what is the funding source for the increased cost of allowing members to move to the DP 1.75? Should the additional cost be borne by the employee electing to transfer or will the government share in the cost? Those are some of the questions that we'd have, we'd have to uh, work that with Senator Terlai and, and the other co-sponsors of the bill. And um, that, that was basically uh, the general questions that the retirement fund uh, Ms. Paula was and, and I were talking about, but we wanted to get into more details. And and yes, I, I'm in agreement that the uniform it should be more uniform because peace officers you include also the mayors and everybody else. But there there may be a requirement to be in uniform. And I, I agree with Senator Torres on that one. That one we can tweak and we can look over it with Senator Terlai, uh, Senator Pito, and we can and we can uh, figure out what we need to do. Funding source. I like how you asked that question, Senator Tidy. We. I agree with you, we need to identify a funding source. I'm waiting for an AG opinion, and at 10.30, we're gonna ask that question about getting an AG opinion more timely. But I've asked the question about appropriation, because we do have money that's supposedly surplus uh, from the previous years, and I wanna be able to find a way to fund this, this bill, because this takes care of not only the fire department, but the police officers, DOC, court employees, they're uniform. Um, airport we have a bunch of folks out there and then we can figure out what the cost would be and then as a retirement fund um i'll have senator peter and i will get together we'll, we'll meet with the uh with Paula and, and and maybe do a round table if not and figure out exactly what do we need to make this bill more whole more complete and so that when we push it on the floor uh, we, we've got senator peter's back we're taking care of all the law enforcement and I mentioned earlier that uh, Senator Peter and I, when we first got in the police department, we could have been a fireman. But unfortunately, there's no room in the fire department back then in the 70s. So we end up being police officers. And then to a certain period, <laughs> we couldn't go over there anymore after they split up the fire department from the Department of Public Safety to GFD and GPD. But that being said, Senator Peter, would you like to uh, make any closing statements? And then we'll we'll... We'll still continue to receive testimonies, folks. So, Joe, do you want? I got three more uh, uh, testimonies. written testimonies. You want me to go? Oh, please that? do. At least I can name the people that submitted the written testimony so that they know they're also <laughs> represented on this uh, dialogue. Okay, can please, please do. And maybe never mind because basically all the uh, the written testimony is basically the same with the others that I read already. So I just wanted to make sure that the people that submitted their, their testimony uh, are, are put on record. Do you want me to do that or just go with the closing if, remarks? No, no, if you can at least recognize them. I wanted to make sure, and you're right, Senator Pito, if we can make sure everybody is recognized for their testimony, not necessarily to read it all out. Okay. Because they're all uh, in, in Mr. Court Chair, we, uh, I want to recognize Platoon A. I think this is from Marizo. Uh, submitted by George uh, Rupley, Mark A. Terlahi, Edward M. Dranius, Roger B. De Los Reyes, Roy M. T. Candasso, Terence M. Dago. And uh, Platoon B is Richard S. Agun, Arthur T. San Nicolas, Jeffrey B. Chuckle, Dean C. Paris, Nathan S. Torres, and Joshua Manglonia. That's from Marizo. And the other uh, testimony here, the written testimony is coming from Edward Flores from the Guam Fire Department. And lastly, uh, there's several names. Uh, we wanna recognize uh, O.R. Salas, Tovis Vincent Ray, uh, Ray M.P. Ada, E.S. Flores, T.S. Nelson, W.A. Naval, A.A. Sambitan, Flores, um, um, Michael Flores Agon, Rico Rector, and M.A. Sawyer. Uh, those are the written testimony uh, from the fire department. And now, uh, Mr. Chair, let me um, uh, do my closing remarks. Thank you, sir. I forgot to mention that your last listing came from Zona. And you and Senator Talai should have been proud. That's donor station. <laughs> well, that's why my that's why my donor rules is number one on the voting. 
<laughs> okay. In closing, I, I want to uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, from the bottom of my heart, and I want to thank you all for allowing Bill 38035 to move forward. And I ask my colleagues to listen to our public safety officers, look at the other states and the plans, and allow them to have the actuary study to determine a cost neutral retirement plan for public safety officers. Once again, Mr. Chair, thank you very much. And my colleague, thank you very much. Uh, and those that uh, Mary, uh, Senator Torres and, and Senator uh, Taitugi brought up, uh, we will be talking, uh, Mr. Chair, about that. And we need to clarify everything that has been brought up on this, uh, uh, this uh, hearing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Bidu. There being no additional in individuals to present further testimony on this bill, but I do expect more testimonies to come in from the other agencies, all right? The committee will continue to receive testimonies uh, following this hearing and, and, and that uh, you submit the testimony to the, to the Guam legislature in the Guam Congress building or through an email at senatorjoesanogzin at gmail.com. Again, I want to thank everyone for attending the public hearing and for providing feedback and suggestions. We will be still meeting up with the retirement fund. So my colleagues, this is not a closed door. We are gonna open this up and find out exactly how we can work this for the benefit of the uniform and all the peace officers. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for attending the public hearing and for providing feedback and suggestions. The public hearing is now adjourned. The time now is 10.04. Uh, Masi, stay safe, wear your mask, wash your hands, and practice social distancing. And uh, the next hearing will be at 10.30, and that will be discussing Senator Tello's bill that deals with the, uh, the Attorney General's office. Thank you. You all have a nice day now. Take care. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.